This is the Horse Radio Network. To pull shoes or not to pull shoes, that is the question. Like everyone else, we're trying to stay sane while stuck in quarantine. This week, we're talking about our favorite tips and wardrobe picks for the sunny and warm spring season and how to battle allergies. Thanks for tuning in. From Heels Down Mag, a podcast where horse pros chat about what's happening in the horse world over drinks. Welcome, Welcome to Happy, to Happy Hour. Hour. I'm Justine Griffin. I'm Jessica Payne. And I'm Ellie Wozniaka. Welcome to episode 68 of Heels Down Happy Hour. How's it going, everybody? Hey. Stranded. Stranded. <laughs> but I feel like I see you on our fun virtual happy hour calls on zoom but this is the first time we've actually recorded a podcast episode in a while i know it's been a while i miss this it's kind of uh feels like groundhog day sometimes right yeah (laughs) like every day wake up here we go again same (laughs) thing but you're hanging in there yeah it's been good it's just different we're like actually trying to get a bunch of the stuff done for the farm um because that's still like the construction still going full on. So we've like made it, we've prior to like getting kind of locked down um, in South Carolina, we made a couple trips up with the equipment and everything else. And like Doug went and met up with the builder and did a bunch. So we've kind of like, now we're doing it all sort of virtually, but it's been good. Cause like we've been able, you know, the builder calls all the time and he's like this and then this. And I was like, Doug looked at me the other day. He's like, well, what were we done? Like we were slated to be home two days this month and he wouldn't have been able to call as much. You know, you can't be like in the middle of the ring. Hey, Doug, Carl needs to talk to you about X, Y, and Z. And you know, all of this is like time sensitive. So it has been definitely a little bit. We're trying to see the little silver lining and all this type thing, but we're, we're like, you know what, let's go through. We've been organizing. We have a task a day that we make sure we do to make sure, you know, we don't just get stuck doing nothing and we come out of this quarantine and Doug's like, we did no projects. So Doug's built a couple <laughs> jumps. We've cleaned a lot of stuff. So we're hanging in there, but it is definitely odd times. I so saw, I saw the, the jumps. Air- yeah. The airplane jump is husband yeah. in love or what? Oh my gosh. That's kind of, so the PE pain equestrian jump was the first one. And then Doug thought it would take a little bit more materials. And so he had all this extra stuff. So he was like, what am I going to do now? And so somehow we were like talking about airplanes and we've been doing these thunder domes trying to keep like everybody because we're a pretty competitive group. So we just keep trying to scare the kids essentially. So (laughs) on Sundays, the kids that work for us, we do like an in-house competition and like Cause we've been super weird with the kids, like not being in the barn with them and all this and like just teaching them from afar. So they, you know, come over they bring their horses over and Doug and I are the judges and we do like kind of like a handy speed round. So it's like, if they swing and miss, like you're not going to win. Like, so it's not about time. And so we keep finding like new things to try to like terrify the horses in the ring because <laughs> like, what else do we have to do? So Doug's like, I'm going to build the airplane jump and it's going to get one of them. I can't wait. So we, we had our Easter one this past weekend and that was a lot of fun. But yeah, Doug's like, I think Hudson's going to love it. And so now every time he walks by the ring, he's like, airplane, airplane, airplanes. That's all we hear now. <laughs> That's so cute. Well, Doug should do like an online tutorial with the jumps because you got they're beautiful and they look like they didn't take like they weren't that hard to make. Or were they? No, it, no, they're not. I mean, it probably would take me a lot longer. Like I would probably be missing even more fingers, but, um, no, I mean, he just takes like a plywood and he, you know, he's like mechanical engineering as his degree. So he like loves that side of thinking. So he draws it out and then like takes all the saws and, you know, builds it and then paints it. But it takes like, I don't know, probably two days to do each one of them. Yeah, so yeah, so we'll have to get them on and tell him how he does it because i have no clue <laughs> i've like not a clue at all so what are you guys doing to keep busy um well i work at a courthouse so i still have to go to work from 8 30 to 4 30 so that's not fun been typing a lot of transcripts for the court <sighs> also not fun but i mean really i think it's sad because my life hasn't changed that much i'm like uh <laughs> 
The only thing that's changed is that I sometimes don't go buy ice cream at the gas station. So I make <laughs> Matt I make Matt do it amazing. instead. <laughs> that's amazing. That is pretty funny. Oh my gosh. Like, what about you with the newspaper? I'm just oh, working yeah. like an insane person. I work like all I do is work. So, and my husband is a journalist too. So we like, we sit in the same household at opposite ends. Cause I, poor Alex, I, we have an office and I just took it over. It's mine. So he is re- like retrofitted our poor dining room to become his office. And so we just sit in opposite ends of the house and don't talk unless like we have something to say about the dogs. <laughs> oh my gosh. We have so much work. Both of us are working like crazy people. So um, I'm ready for a break, but it's like, why there's no break in sight. Right. Cause I don't want to take a break no. just to s- continue to sit in my own home. You know, like I want to take a break once and I'm like allowed to leave and go do something. So, but I so don't just, think, I think the new normal is going to be kind of weird. I think so too. I think this is like a, not a short term thing. Like we're in for a little bit of a long haul. So we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. But luckily I'm able to go ride. I'm still able to go to the barn. And so that's my, that's that's the only time I leave the house is to go see the horse. So I'll leave the house to go to like the dump. That's about all I do. (laughs) Stop. My dump is closed to the public and I don't have garbage pickup because I don't have garbage pickup. Yeah. So what do you do? I don't know. I haven't gotten to the point where I need to find out yet, but it's getting pretty close. Oh, so we have gotten to that point several times. I've had, I hate going to the dump and I've had to go twice. I mean, prior to Corona, I needed gloves to go to the dump just because it grossed me out. And yes. so now I look like <laughs> I'm being like a Corona person. I'm like, no, I really wear gloves to the dump because it's foul and I have hand sanitizer <laughs> in my room. <laughs> like I get done, I toss the gloves and then I walk in my car and hand sanitize it just for the smell of the hand sanitizer. Yep. Oh my gosh. Yep. I know. I can't. It's so gross. Yep. Well, you'll have to post some images of like your tails at the dump, both of you. <laughs> no. During these no. times. She can't no, post Jess them. She doesn't want to touch her phone. She wishes. Yeah. I don't touch my phone. I don't touch anything. I go home and shower. It's so gross. Uh, it gross. Well, this episode is brought to you by Eka Gold. You guys should check them out. We talk about them all the time that they still have like the hunter pad that I love. I mean, it goes everywhere with us. My parents actually fox hunt in the hunter pad as well. So it's kind of a great pad. It's non-slip, especially like when they go hunting, they, you know, can't wear like the big breastplates. They have like just the simple ones. And so they're out on the hunt for a couple hours and the eco gold hunter pad and the white is the perfect kind of touch to it. So you guys should visit it at ecogold.ca. All right. So I got a great Florida inspired beverage for you guys this week. Uh, thanks to Cassie in our Facebook group for recommending this one. It's the Flora Bama Bushwhacker. I don't know if you guys watched the Flora Bama Shore, that awful MTV reality show. Don't do it. I'm not condoning this, but that's what it makes me think of. But when you think of Flora Bama, they're talking about like the um, northwest part of Florida where it obviously connects to Alabama. So like Pensacola and all the beaches up there. But a bushwhacker is a pretty classic and traditional Florida beverage. And it'll make you feel like you're on vacation, even though you're stuck in your home. So it is a blended drink. It, um, so think of like fruity tropical blended drink. And you're going to want it. drink. It's delicious. It's one of those that creep up on you. If you're not careful. So it's a half, a half shot of light rum and then another half shot of spiced rum and then a half shot of Kahlua. If you're into that, um, a half shot of Armoretto, a shot of cream de cocoa. Um, and then you add vanilla ice cream, like three to four scoops and a splash of milk and you blend it all together and you want to top it off with a cherry um, and put it in a cool tropical cup. And there you go. This These are good. Exactly what I need in my life every day. Some, some people add like you could put like half of a banana in it and blend that in too. If you like banana or some people put like some chocolate, you can 
it's like an easy drink to customize since you're just dumping everything into the, you know, the blender, but they're good. It's also something I feel like I could put in one of those smoothie containers and take with me and no one would know that I was <laughs> drinking everywhere. <laughs> this is true. Yep. That's it just amazing. makes me want to be on the beach, though. You know? That's fair. You know? Womp, but womp. Yeah, can, can't do the beach either, can we? Not right now, unfortunately. But all right, what do you guys got for news? Jess, you want to go first? Yeah, I do. I have a pretty interesting one. So obviously not just the U.S. is on lockdown. Everywhere in the world is basically on lockdown. So there is a really cool place, um, a real cool situation in Vienna, where they're using their horse-drawn carriages to now deliver meals. Oh, so cool. this company, yeah, because yeah, they're like, there's no tourism. There's no, you know, no one's really out and about, but the horses need to still get out and go for walks. So what they're doing is they're actually taking the horses and delivering a ton of meals to like the elderly and the people in need. So pretty good story, like help up. And they're like, basically say it's helping both sides out. The horses need to get out and the people need their food. It's a really kind of heartwarming story. Yeah, definitely. It's sort of like, like a nice that. little bright spot. Yeah. I right. was thinking, Ellie, what do you have? Well, I was also thinking if this comes down to like World War Three and we all lose power, I was thinking it's a good thing that my horse knows how to drive so that I would still have transportation if we lost all you power. You can still go get the ice cream. Yes, I would. St- <laughs> there would be no power to keep my ice cream, but I'd find it. Um, <laughs> yep. Anyway, (laughs) so my story is funny. Did you guys see Shania Twain's video with their horse? So she can't perform or anything, obviously, because of the whole coronavirus. Um, We should keep a tally of how many times we say that during this uh, podcast. Right. No. (laughs) But so there's this video of her singing acoustic uh, with, like, her dog next to her. And she's got, like, this Palomino Arabian. And her... (laughs) horse is like on top of her the entire time and all I could think about was what I probably look like on the zoom calls with my cats I was like this is what I look like I wish I was as hot as Shania Twain though and uh could sing that good so that was my news of the week was just that that made me laugh oh that's a good one too what about you Justine so I've got a good sciencey one uh the University of Kentucky decided they wanted to find out if trace elements that present in a horse's mane, uh, if it changed as the horse is aged. So you know how, like, even in people, how, like, you could take a hair sample and you can find out, like, what you ate or in a drug test scenario. Um, And sometimes the trace elements in hair can be different than if they pull a blood sample. Um, So they, so the University of Kentucky was interested in seeing if that is also true in horses. So basically they took mane hair and blood samples from 59 horses between the ages of two months to 26 years old, all at the same farm. And then they analyzed both hair and blood samples um, for 11 trace elements. And the researchers found that elements in mane hair were higher than that of blood, uh, which is sort of interesting. So, um, and they, they trace like very common elements that are found in horses, but um, I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. So, uh, and we'll, we'll obviously share this story in our show notes so you can like get all the, the good details, but, um, it's interesting because obviously for FEI or U- USCF, they pull blood, right. But you would, you could technically maybe get different levels if they pulled it from the main. So I wonder if like people are going to use this information to kind of figure out what does and does not come up in blood or if like they're going to start drug testing both ways. That's what I think is going to be interesting. Yeah, I mean, it sounds expensive for them to, to te- you know, yeah. test both ways for sure. Um, yeah. And it's interesting. So in the study, like some things were, you know, more detectable in hair, but some things were less detectable in hair. So, um, so, you know, it sounds like neither situation is perfect. Right. So the, and they, they found no correlation between main hair and blood either. So it's, 
Um, it's kind of interesting. And obviously hair, I think hair is more easily contaminated. Obviously it can be dirty, that kind of thing. We, we clearly wash horses skin. So, um, so it's probably not as reliable. That makes sense. Yeah. But interesting nonetheless. So in kind of other news, the FEI also decided to put out this note for all FEI officials and judges. And they did this clarifying one of the rules about online competitions. So I had Doug come jump on with us so that he could kind of talk to us as like, you know, an FEI rider as well, that just what they're thinking. And cause I know my kind of confusion and not really sure why in these trying times, the FEI would decide, okay, like, Let's decide that we don't want online competitions to come on because, you know, I know things like there's that virtual eventing that's been put on and they're doing it as a fundraiser for, you know, it's a charitable event and stuff. So they're like trying to raise money. And now this FEI posted this clarification as a rule where basically riders, judges, officials, nobody can partake in anything that's not sanctioned. And in that case, Riders can't participate this. Judges can't judge, you know, online competitions because they're saying it's an unfair field. Doug, what do you kind of think about this? Yeah, I saw this the other day, and I think it's instantly I'm enraged, honestly, because <laughs> we have a, a very, very difficult situation now in, throughout the entire world. And I think people are stuck at home, quarantined away from everybody and have finally been looking for outlets or something to follow and and something honestly that's a bit hopeful that they can participate in to something that a little bit at least reflects what normal life uh, was before and now for the FEI to come and basically their statements pretty much say that if you're an FEI judge or rider and you participate in any of these you're pretty well blacklisted for the next six months after that and they do in this clarification say well if it's a national horse trial and you're not getting there's no placing and there's no prize money or whatever it might be that that's acceptable but any fei judge or fei rider or fei horse could not partake in anything that would resemble a competition and i think it's a complete overstepping of the fei and especially in these trying times um honestly it's disheartening and um, i i just really can't stress enough how just absurd this ruling and proclamation would be. Well, and especially since like we're trying to all come together, do any sort of normalcy like you're talking about and they're discouraging it where this is not benefiting. This is not like, I understand where they don't want riders to go out and, you know, during a normal year, they're trying to keep the, you know, all of this, but this is an overstep of their boundaries. I think to say like, okay, first off, we can't compete in FEI competitions for God knows how long, because we don't know what this is all gone. We're already, you know, two months or a month and whatever we're in to not competing. And it's kind of weird. So we're like, okay, look, it's bringing joy to not only FEI riders, but everyday riders to like send in their test and kind of say, okay, guess what? We can, you know, go to a horse show in a sense where somebody can judge. And these might be times that these other riders it's the first time they can be in front of an FEI judge and stuff like that. So it's kind of bringing everybody together and then they're just kind of stomping on it. It's, it really gives you a bad taste in my mouth about it that, you know, everybody should be coming together. I've seen a lot of good come out of all of this. And this is one of the first things that I've really, really been irritated to like, you know, honestly read about. And I think the sentiment is universal. I think I posted this on our Facebook last night and within two hours, I think I had, 40 some odd shares and, you know, another 4,000 likes or whatever. So it's, uh, I think we have universal approving, uh, from the general population, but I I just don't see how the FBI can possibly in good conscience continue uh, with this sort of policy. So we just want to give a shout out to everyone who supports us on Patreon. Uh, we really appreciate you guys. I know we've rolled back our schedule lately on how often we're releasing podcasts and we hope you bear with us during this time. We promise we're going to get back to normal as soon as possible, but we really appreciate everyone who listens to us every month, uh, who participates in our Facebook group conversations, who's joining us for happy hour during this time. If you love this podcast and you love the horse radio network, you should really, uh, think about becoming a, uh, benefactor but on Patreon. And you can do that by going by searching for heels down happy hour on patreon.com. Patreon is P A 
T-R-E-O-N.com. So Justine, did you get the Smart Pack fine, fine mesh? I can't say it. It's tongue twister. Uh, fly mask. I did. Did you, Ellie? I did not, but this sounds really interesting <laughs> and I hate bugs. So I buy a lot of fly masks. So I want to hear your thoughts. Okay. Um, yeah. Fly masks. I can't even believe it's like time to be thinking about fly masks and fly season, but it's, it's April. It's time. So I did, <laughs> I did get to check out this wonderful, um, fly mask from smart pack. And I will preface this conversation with my horse, um, is a fly mask destroyer. He's like the worst. I go through fly masks like crazy. Um, so when I first saw it, when it first arrived and I took it out of the box, I was a little worried because it's very light and the material is uh, thin because it's mesh. And I was like, oh, man, Mikey is going to destroy this in 24 hours. But I can tell you I've had it for a couple weeks now and it's still standing. So what I like about it is the mesh is it's exactly what you think of. It's mesh. You can see through it, um, but it's it's quite thin. And for my horse, who's not a great sweater. I am always looking for ways to make him cooler and more comfortable. And this mask is very light. Like I have, I usually like, I have a Kensington fly mask too. And that he's always sweaty on under his face. Um, when he wears it right now, uh, which knock on wood, that's because he's, he's sweating right now, but, um, you know, they get kind of hot with like the fleece or, or, you know, the big fleece and the materials a little bit heavy. This fly mask is very light um, it's really easy to wear, but it has a super heavy duty, uh, strap underneath. Like it's very, the strap is very thick and it's hard for, like, there would be no way for him to get the strap off, which I appreciate. Um, it also offers up to 20% UV block, which is great for a horse here in Florida. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a, it's a super nice fly mask. It's I'm, but Really, the selling point for me is just how breathable it is and the fact that it's light for my horse to wear. Like, he's not feeling so stuffy underneath it. And What it's, size did you get? Um, I got the horse size. And my horse has a big old block head. So okay. I feel like if you got, like, a big old warm blood head, the horse size would fit. Okay, that's what I worry about because Berkeley has, like, an in-between head. <laughs> okay. So, I think it would but, fit him. Yeah. I mean, all right. I have to try this. Yeah, do. it's really nice. I mean, and it's um, it's relatively cheap, you know, and in fly mass standards, you can get it for twenty three bucks on fly on um, you know with tax and all that on Smart Packs website. But it's it's a great fly mask. I definitely would recommend it. And so, if you want to check it out for yourself, Dang. you can go to Smart Packs website, which is smartpackequine dot com, and search for the uh, Smart Pack Fine Mesh Fly Mask. So we get that quarantine is no fun for anybody. So you guys should totally come join us for our weekly Zoom uh, happy hours at 630 on Thursdays. We've had some really fun guests like Elisa Wallace and Danielle Goldstein. So you guys should come check it out. Uh, come see my cats and we'll have fun and drink together. All right, everybody. We're really excited to have a really fun guest with us on the show this week. <laughs> we have Jackie Eckert, who's the founder of EIS, which is Equi and Style. Um, that's the company that makes these amazing high fabric or high tech fi fabric shirts that we love to wear when we ride. We've reviewed them on the show before, and um, we're just huge fans here at Heels Down Mags. So welcome, Jackie. Oh, thanks so much. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for joining us. So uh, to start, can you just tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you got into horses and how you started EIS? Um, well, actually, I'm an Air Force brat. And so I was raised um, all around the world. And my dad was the horse person in my family. And so um, I don't think I really got into horses. I, I've been horses as it, probably the very first word that I ever spoke was horses or horse related. So, um, I don't know. My dad, um, we got my first horse when I was nine years old and we were in the air force at the time. And, uh, we moved from base to base and it was always a matter of finding a place for her first. And, um, then I've just, I've had a horse all, 
all my life. And so it's, I didn't really get into it. I was just born with it. Awesome. We know what that's like. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. So what was your inspiration to start Equian Style? I was really tired of a farmer's tan and <laughs> uh, being sunburned all the time. And I was a flight attendant for, um, I started flying in the early 80s and having a farmer's tan, anytime I wasn't working, I was out, outside and I was riding. So um, I started looking for something to protect my skin and there wasn't anything out there. So I happened to be, it's really kind of funny. I happened to be showing at WEF one year and um, this woman rode by on a bicycle and she had this really pretty colored shirt on and I chased her down uh, back to a barn and I went back there and I said, there was a woman that had a long sleeve shirt on and um, they said, oh, well, she's left. And I said, well, can I drop a note in her tack box, which I did. And she called me back. I'm trying to make a long story short out of this. Sure. And she called me back about three months later. And um, it was Maria who owned Betancourt Golf. And it was a golf shirt. So I asked her, I said, would it be possible for you to send that shirt to me and let me try it out in in riding? She didn't ride very much. And uh, so she did. And it was fabulous. And I, it was, it had the mesh in it and, and that's where it came from. It's a golf shirt originally. So I took it over and I said, I think I can bring this out in the EQ world. And I did that and I rep for her and, um, I'm trying to make it a, a long story short. She went out of business. I was left with the shirt people were clamoring me and for me to get the shirt. So I became the manufacturer and I brought the shirt out in the EQ world. And there's a lot of mesh out there right now. It was, um, and it had the UPF 50, it had all the right stuff in it. And it was a, just a product that hadn't been seen in the, in the equestrian world because it was long sleeve. Yeah, definitely. And now, now I feel like it's the sun shirt trend is here to stay right you know it's yeah totally i know it, we kind of fell into the sun shirt now we're in the sun shirt category but originally it was um and i formed the company my own company equine style um based on that shirt with the original registration as a cool shirt because of oh. the technology in it and it hadn't been seen before Mm-hmm. So over the years, it's been 10 years now, we're going really into our 11th year, which is fantastic that we're still here. Um, and it's been a lot of, of, of course, we've been a lot of other people and competitors have come up with uh, the shirt and the technology. Um, so it, we fall into the sun shirt category now. But you, for yeah, there are definitely competitors, but I... I noticed with EIS, the fabric is so unique. It's very different than any other brand I've ever worn. And it, it, I understand what you mean by the cool technology because it is the coolest shirts I own. Can you tell us a little bit more about how you kind of came up with those fabrics? Because they're so comfortable to wear. They do exactly what you say they do and keeping mm-hmm. you comfortable and dry and cool. And I imagine that took a lot of time and energy to put, put all that together. Well, I have to say I was very fortunate because when I was repping for for, uh, the golf company, um, that shirt, that material was proprietary to uh, Betancourt Golf. And um, the technology that is embedded in that material and how it was made was proprietary for Betancourt Golf. And then when they went out of business, I contacted the company and I took over the manufacturing of it. So I was able to retain that material for my company. Wow. And um, over the years, I've looked at a lot of different materials and I just haven't found anything that really was that comfortable and really, uh, you know, fit fit the different things that I wanted from that shirt. And, uh, so I stayed with that material until now, until the collection. (laughs) So it's really interesting. You talk about golf and everything else, because I don't know if a lot of our listeners know this, but you guys have an excellent golf, uh, sorry, not golf line, excellent men's line 
that yep. my husband, Doug, that, loves wearing that, golfing. And so that's why it's yeah. funny you talk about golf is he wears his shirt not only riding, but he wears it golfing because it looks really good with the golf pants and everything else, as well as the riding pants. So he actually wears it both places. And it's, it's funny because everybody's like, what shirt is that? And everything else. And not a lot of people know EIS have a men's line because all of us women love, love our female line of that. But it's right. really interesting, you know, from that aspect that I don't think a lot of our listeners or everybody know there is that men's line. Well, that, that is the second love of my life is golf. And oh, okay. um, so it is, it's kind of evolved. The reason I had it as Equa in style to begin with is because of, of golf really um, that you can still be stylish and ride and be outside and keep yourself protected. So that goes right into golf as well. Because there's a certain classical way of dressing when you ride, and there's a certain classical way that you dress when you when you have an etiquette when you golf. So the the whole line is not just for riding, hence it was a golf golf shirt to begin with. It it goes into lifestyle, and golf is part of my lifestyle and my husband's as well. So there's just the, it was just a natural progression to come up with a really good men's shirt. And the reason we put the collar on it and the button down collar is because of our guys who ride. You can and wear the tie. And you have to, and we put a tie stay on it. So we have that and we, uh, you can have the shirt with the tie stay or without it. But in golf right now too, there's a big, uh, you can also wear the button down because you can wear it from the golf course right into the, um, into the, into clubhouse. Speaking of different lines, I understand that EIS is launching a new sustainable riding shirt. <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited about this. Yes. <laughs> Can you tell us some more about it? Yeah. Well, we've had so many, um, so many people over the last year or so saying, listen, when are you going to do print? Where are you, when are you going to do an all over print shirt? And I have for many years, left my shirts alone without putting any kind of really branding on the outside because a lot I just feel that people really want to make our shirts theirs hence the custom part of the VIS is really becoming pretty big and barns like to embellish them um, our venues like to embellish them and put their own uh, branding on them also so anyway I went looking for another material I met a company that I really liked. They had some great um, materials to print on. Um, it had to be really brilliant. Uh, it had to be, I don't know, just had, had a lot of must-haves. And in November, they called me and they said, listen, we have, we have a material that we think that will really dovetail into EIS quite well. So I flew down and met with them in November and they brought this fabric out and it just had all the right qualities. So I said, okay, it's a go. So we have done our first, and it was the name of the material, in fact, was Kalima Echo. And from my flying days, that was just really cool. So I said, do you mind if I call it Kalima, the Kalima collection? And it has, it had to have UPF 50, which is hard to find. Um, believe it or not. And it had to have all the right moisture wicking and anti-micro, all that other stuff in it. But the print was just fabulous. And then he told me, he said, it's sustainable, it's recyclable. And I said, done deal. It's great. And it's EIS goes green. And it just kind of fits in with everything that I've always felt with the company and protecting us from the sun but allowing us to be out in the sun. And then all of a sudden we have so much technology now going on with fabrics that now we have something that we can, we can say we can do a print and it's also eco-friendly for the environment because there's a lot of tech fabrics out there that are not eco-friendly. So I'm, I'm curious, what is the sustainable product like that it's made of from? It's made from plastic bottles. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah. So That's it's, very it's cool. eight, eight plastic bottles to make one, one shirt. Wow. That's really neat. Yeah. And the process 
if you talk about polyester material 10, 11, 12 years ago, it's not the same. And when they first told me polyester, I was like a little backed off from it. But then you're looking at all these new technologies now where they're making, when they take the plastic bottle, it's a whole process. Um, and they eventually crush it up, they grind it, they, um, it, it, it ends up being a fiber. And that's how they make the fabric and the material. And then when they make the fabric and the material, then they put the certain technologies in it. So Is when this, will this new line be available? Uh, to uh, we're, we're really excited about it. So it should be out um, the end of April. And we're, we're just launching our marketing on, um, for the website also for pre-sale. And we presented it to the stores also right now. So Sounds great. EIS-wear.com is where you can go and pre-buy as an individual. Well, Jackie, thank you so much for joining us. This has been great. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, also, just want to tell everybody we have a brand new, brand new short sleeve shirt coming out. That's the old classical style of the Johnny Collar. And that will be out in four different colors and our new colors, summer colors. And that will be out in April as well. Oh, that sounds awesome. I can't wait to get a shirt for myself. <laughs> Hillstown Mag is giving you a chance to win your own EIS cool shirt. And if you are interested, we're asking you to submit an essay of no more than 600 words telling us three things you do every ride. So that could be part of your routine, everything that um, is important to you that's part of your warm up, whatever you would like to tell us that are three things you do every time you ride. Write it in an essay, email it to us at hello at heelsdownmedia.com. And if you submit it to us before April 27th, you will be entered to win an EIS cool shirt, which is a $92 shirt. You can get all the details about our giveaway by going to heelsdownmag.com. All right, guys. So we talked a little bit about the fly mask and we heard from Jackie about her wonderful, cool shirts that are great for the summertime. I wanted to talk to you as we're transitioning into warmer weather now with the spring and summer. How do you combat spring allergies with your horses or even you as a rider? Or what are you doing for like, you know, bug prevention tips? Uh, how do you manage your farm this time of year? I think for us, we're just you know, it's starting to get a lot warmer. I mean, we've hit 80 a couple of days already this week here in Aiken, but for us, the bugs, we end up keeping them in. Like when it's super hot, we'll bring them in in the middle of the day and everybody gets in with their fans, but they also wear some type of like fly sheet or cool coat or something like that. We always use the really light ones. Um, that have really worked for us. And then, then along with like fly masks with Jesse and it's I talked about earlier. And then for allergies, we've been pretty lucky. We don't really have a lot that have allergies. Um, lately we've just been really kind of lucky in that since we've had them in the past where we've had to do some sort of hay gain or hay steamer type thing that has really worked. And then the breathing, the biggest thing that we have in the not not so much breathing is that the horses don't sweat sometimes here in the South and you really worry about that. So then we go to medication and stuff for that sort of situation and making sure that every horse is really sweating because that's kind of the biggest thing we kind of run into is that horses don't sweat or don't sweat well. And so then we have to go to kind of alternative things to keep them from having that problem. What about you, Ellie? Well, so this is only my, my second summer, second summer here. Yeah. So we are trying out some new things last summer. I tried, have you guys seen those little like bug nets where you like put the like fly food in the bottom and they're supposed to like fly up and get caught in the like little mesh thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't work at all. <laughs> um, which I was really sad about. And maybe it's because I had it like up in the barn. Um, but I, it didn't catch anything. So I'm hoping that, I can figure something else out. We have really bad horse flies here. Um, like enormous, like two inches long and they're terrifying. And I get really scared just bringing the horses in partially because like, you know, they react a lot to those. 
And also, uh, I'm afraid to get bit. <laughs> um, so we're going to try some different fly sprays. I've heard some people actually put like like garlic supplements. And I think Smart Pack has one. So I might try those um, as far as internal for bugs. Um, hmm. Actually, have you heard of that? I have. Yeah, I have heard about it. That's interesting. Yeah. But Matt's horse, we every year we have a problem because Matt's horse is a halflinger. Uh, and it's common for the breed because they originate from Austria. And in Austria, they don't have any biting flies, um, like the little black ones. So they are allergic to the fly saliva. Um, so what Nemo does is he like rubs his entire stomach like completely raw, like just from itching. Um, so we have to like make sure he's not out during like high, high bug, like new or dusk and um, dawn. Uh, so like just admire inside during the day with fans. Um, but and unfortunately, Berkeley's got allergies. So we just had to get a hay steamer, which uh, those are not very cheap. So hopefully that works. <laughs> um but Justine, I know you have had issues with Mikey sweating in the past, but in terms of like bugs, like, is it really bad in Florida? So yes and no. Uh, you know, as the weather gets wetter, that's when we have the bug problem in Florida. And there's just, you know, at, at some point there's just nothing you can do about it. You know, it's going to rain. There are going to be bugs. There are going to be puddles. Uh, and it really just depends on your farm and how high and dry you are. I just, you know, I moved to a new farm last year and, um, luckily she, the farm does not flood. So we don't really get that, those standing pools of water where you get a lot of bugs. Um, but still, you know, like I'm big on mosquito control in my fly spray. That's really important to me. So I buy the more expensive fly sprays to kind of keep mosquitoes away I don't really use fly sheets because I'm always worried about my horse that doesn't sweat well. Like he doesn't need anything else on his body, right? This time of year. So, um, so I don't use a fly sheet, but I'm, um, I obviously use a fly mask for his eyes and for his face. And then I'm big on, uh, like trying to keep his, my horse is barefoot. I'm big on trying to keep my horse's feet not too soft in the wet weather, so I love Caratex products for that, just like the hoof hardener. And then also the, they do like a, a coating product too. That's really great at keeping moisture out. Um, but with my, because my horse is not a good sweater, he's the, you know, the first telltale, telltale sign that he's not sweating well is he'll be huffing away in his stall. Like he can't catch his breath and he'll be really hot to the touch because he, he physically cannot sweat. So I'm, I'm really careful about his breathing, even when I'm riding, like making sure that he's not over labored when we're riding. So like there are lots, I give him lots more walk breaks in between exercises in between or even our warm up, and just ch like checking, checking his temperature and making sure that he's sweating. So I wondered, I Jess, I was actually going to ask you if you thought a flare strip might be a good idea for him in the summertime just to kind of help keep his airway, his airways open um, when he might be struggling a little bit more in like high humidity or high heat. So, yeah, we've not necessarily really had one with this whole sweating. Yes. Like they sometimes kind of get labored breathing. So I would think that a flare strip would actually help because it is one that you can wear kind of longer term. It's got that medical grade adhesive and also it has been proven to reduce the airway resistance of the upper airway. So I haven't actually personally given it a shot, but it's actually quite a good idea with one that's kind of labored breathing and all of that, that next time we might try to kind of go, okay, look, like, let's try this as well. Cause anything just to open up that airway would really, really help them. Yeah. That's a great idea. Maybe I'll try that this summer too and see if that helps them at all. Yeah. Cause that'd be really good. This segment was brought to you by Flare. If you're interested in learning more about Flare strips, which help horses improve their breathing, you can go to flarestrips.com. So it's that time again. It's Rose and Thorn. You guys, I have a really good one. Um, I'm going to go first because I still am feeling the backlash of my thorn, honestly. So I'm going to start <laughs> that one. So 
Doug and I got nominated for this like quarantine couples challenge or whatever, where basically I have to like be a monkey around Doug and like crawl on him and like not hit the floor, I guess was the point of it or something. And so you have to like start jumping on his back, go around, go up over him and then crawl through his legs and then back up. And we're like, Oh, this won't be that bad. Like I'm not even that in shape. Like I just had a child a couple months ago. Like this was a terrible, terrible idea, honestly. (laughs) So I'm like, I've got this. So we like try and we have the kids, we have Hudson running around the dog, running around everything. And so I'm like, no worries. And I thought, oh, I'm fine. I should have put down like four yoga mats. So like have cushion if I decided to fall, but I was like, how are you going to fall? Like you can't fall that bad. Right. No, I was wrong. So I go and I'm like, you he like, you jump over his shoulders. And so like my feet are touching it, like going towards the ceiling. And then you have to wrap your hands around and he's a tall dude. And I'm not very short. I'm not very tall. So like, there's a lot of like things. So he's grabbed your hands from underneath his legs. And then you have to like crawl up. I was like, Oh, I got this. Let go of my, and I let go of the leg. Well, my leg is over his shoulder and I just drop straight to the ground and he has a hold of my hands. So I couldn't brace myself. So I, I mean, I felt so bad, like thud on the ground. So I'm pretty sure I like, I'm going to be sore for a couple days. I'm day two and it's really, really sore. So that is definitely my thorn. And then my rose would be that We, with all this off time and everything else, we decided why not let's breed the star witness mare because, um, obviously like we're not going to have her carry. We want her. So we talked to the owners along with all of us and we said, Hey, look, let's breed her to our stallion, our little five-year-old, um, we call him Harry or Harold. He's, um, actually got really good breeding. He's by quite easy and he's got a lot of blood, but he does a hundred derbies. He's very versatile. Like he got a 19 at his like last event or something. So he's really, really nice. And he's, um, he's just gone one training level at this point. So we bred the two of them together. Cause we think why not? Like she's beautiful and he's amazing. So, and she's obviously amazing. Everyone loves her. So why not breed them? We haven't done embryo transfer and all that, but we have bred her and we're just waiting to see if she takes and then we'll flush her and put her in a surrogate mirror. So that hopefully will be my rose in the next couple weeks coming forward. That's really cool. That's really exciting for you guys. Yeah. So, you know, it's literally Harry's first baby. He's only five. So we will see. We're really excited. I think you guys have like a baby like obsession. I feel like something is all like, why not? <laughs> right? We're like, why not? I'm not having any more. So we should just have them have more. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. What about you, Ellie? Well, my rose and my thorn are the same <laughs> because, um, so I've been really struggling with Berkeley's allergies. I think I brought that up here before. Um, but lately he's had like a lot of labored breathing and stuff. Um, and it wasn't really in my budget, uh, to buy a hay steamer. Um, but I did because I obviously am obsessed with him and, you know, don't want him to be struggling. Uh, so I bought one, um, which is my rose, but it is also my thorn, uh, because, I now have to figure out how I'm going to pay it off. So I'm going to be doing a lot of extra work (laughs) uh, for the next couple of months to try to figure out how I'm going to get that paid off. But so that sucks because like adulting is unfortunate. I liked it better when my mom paid for my horses. Um, So that's unfortunate that she doesn't do that anymore. (laughs) <laughs> but this is, oh my goodness. This is new for him though. Um, you'll figure it out though. Like the longer, yeah, the longer he, you maintain him, the, you know, the more you'll figure it out. Yeah. He's never had any issues like this before. Um, Ugh. I'm thinking our hay was just like either too dusty or what the vet thinks is that there was some kind of like new mold spore in the hay that just kind of triggered him. Um, so that kind of sucks. He was like, it was like Ghostbusters in his stall. He was like coughing up like mucus that was just like disgusting. Like this. Aww. So, 
that went away. Um, but now I've got to figure out the breathing. So I'm hoping it works. I've heard, I'll keep you guys, uh, updated, but I've heard really good things about hay steaming. So hopefully it works for Berkeley. But what about you, Justine? Um, so my rose is going to sound really sad and also ridiculous, but it is a dream I had last night that I was, I, I, (laughs) My, the dream I had last night was that I was shopping at a TJ Maxx and that's it. That's all it was. I was Sad. browsing the aisles of TJ Maxx, looking at all the knickknacks and things that I could be buying and bring to my house. But I woke up in the morning feeling like, Oh man, do you remember what it was like when you could just like show up at a TJ Maxx and just shop? And that is my rose is that I, had a nice dream about TJ Maxx. And then I am hopeful that one day I can return and can buy things that I don't need from TJ Maxx because they're so cheap that I just have to buy them. So (laughs) I I literally woke up this morning and I told my husband this dream and he was like, wow. And I was like, I'm saving this (laughs) for my rose for the podcast. (laughs) And he was just like, wow. That's amazing. (laughs) So that's my rose whether to like be jealous that you have this dream or whether to feel pity for you. <laughs> It'll be a glorious day when I can return to TJ Maxx is all I'm saying. <laughs> oh my gosh. So then maybe my thorn is also my dream. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I don't know. My thorn is, uh, my thorn is that I'm stuck in my house, I guess. We'll go with that. Mom, it's not the worst case scenario. I mean, my house is okay. I generally like my house. I have chickens. <laughs> I have dogs. I like my husband. It could be worse, but I um I am anxious to do other things. So that's my thorn. Can Feeling I, restless. Can I change my thorn to be that I am not stuck in my house? Because I would like to be stuck in my house because I am really sick of wearing a bra. Like, I just think that <laughs> In general, like <laughs> it's just unfortunate. <laughs> oh man! Well, you could join me because I can't tell you the last time I wore one. So <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fantastic. Oh my goodness! All right, so we do have a really good mailbag um, from Caitlin, who's in our Facebook group, and she wants our opinion on pulling shoes. So mm-hmm. she has a thoroughbred. Who ha- who's currently in shoes and where she lives, it's not muddy or it's it's not rocky either. Um, but she's wondering if now is a good time to pull her, pull the shoes off her horse. Um, but she has a fear that his feet are just going to self-destruct. So do you guys have any opinions on pulling shoes or trying to transition to going barefoot? What's What do you think? So my thing is always talk to your farrier and just ask them. Um, because, you know, they ultimately will know better, like, Hey, you know, your horse has really weak soles. Maybe we shouldn't do this or he's going to get stone bruises really easy. Um, that's the situation with Berkeley. Um, but if a horse, especially if he has been barefoot before, um, you know, kind of transition him, if he's got all four all the way around, you know, start by just pulling the backs and see how he does before you, you know, pull his legs that he's, you know, bearing all of most of his weight on. Um, but I mean, as long as it's not, you know, it's not, I w- the only thing I worry about this time of year would be stomping flies. Cause that can really tear up their front feet. You guys know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good point. But so for us, we don't pull, we don't really pull any of our shoes, honestly, like even with the downtime after an event, because like, same thing, our farriers like works so hard to keep these horses feet that we generally, I know a lot of people end up pulling the shoes and it's the right thing for them. But personally for us, we don't pull anybody's shoes front or back just because, uh, they end up getting torn up and all the money we've spent basically keeping and maintaining it goes out the window. So we end up saying, okay, look, like we'll just keep the regular shoes and what we worked hard on and not having to go backwards. So that's just generally what we do. Yeah. I, I mean, I've had like my thoroughbred right now has never had shoes. I've been really lucky and knock on wood that he's been great without shoes. So I have no plans to put shoes on him, but I did have a Hanoverian mare who 
when I got her, she was shod and I tried to transition her to be barefoot. And I tried multiple times over the course of like two years to try to transition her to be barefoot. And it just became very clear with working with two different farriers that she was never going to be comfortable barefoot. So I just, Ellie, I think your advice is really good that you should just, you know, work with your farrier and come up with a plan that works for your horse. Um, and the, be- you know, the good news is it, you know, even if your horse is not going to do well barefoot, you could always put shoes back on. There's no harm in at least trying it because you can always correct it. So, um, I, I mean, my advice would be to try it. And if it doesn't work out, put shoes back on. Yeah. So if you have a question for us that you would like us to talk about on the show, you can send us an email at hello at heelsdownmedia.com. Or you can join our Facebook group, which is the Heels Down Happy Hour Podcast Lounge. If you want to hear more from us, you should subscribe to the Heels Down Brief. It's our daily email newsletter. You could do that by going to bit.ly slash hdbrief. And we want to say thank you to all our partners this week, EcoGold, Flare, and Smart Pack. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Cheers. 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 <laughs>